In this tutorial, we will learn about UV editing in Blender, and the correct way to add texture to any complex object. We will discuss about the UV editor, why we need it, and how to use this editor. Let's say, you have created a pyramid structure like this. And you have downloaded a wooden texture from the internet. You want to apply this texture to your pyramid object. As long as you have flat surfaces like this, you do not necessarily need to go for any UV editing in order to add the texture. It can be done just by using an image texture, like what we have done here, along with a simple mapping node. And we have also selected a box type projection. This will work in many cases for flat objects like this. We can look at the rendered view, the result is quite good, and the texture looks okay. But if you have an object with a curved surface like this, and you want to add a texture to this, simply adding an image texture node may not yield the correct result, you will need to create one UV map. But before we discuss on curved surface, let us first take an easy example to understand the basics of UV editor in Blender. So, instead of this, we'll add one cube object. We'll add the wooden texture for this after UV unwrap. UV unwrap is the name of a process in which a 3D surface is flattened and converted into a 2D map or 2D surface, which can be then mapped to any 2D picture. So, go to the materials tab and add a new material. Let us turn on the rendered view mode and we can also enable the HDRI lighting. In order to work further on its material, we'll split this screen into half. Then, let us open the shader editor on this left hand side panel. We have a principal BSDF and a material output node. Now go to the add menu and add an image texture node. We'll open the wooden texture that we want to apply to our cube. Now connect its color output to the color input of the BSDF node. As a result, we can see that the wooden texture is added nicely on all sides of the cube. Here, Blender is using some default UV mapping to project the surface area of this 3D cube object to the 2D texture that we have used. We can also look at that projection or the UV map by opening the UV editor. To see the UV mapping, we have to be in the edit mode here. So let us switch over to the edit mode. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out on this editor. Now we can see an outline which is nothing but the two-dimensional map for the 3D surface area of our cube. Each side of this three-dimensional cube object is now represented by a rectangular area on this map, and this is what we call as the UV mapping. If we select any particular face, we can see the rectangle that represents that face in this UV map. The same goes for other faces as well. If you select all the faces together, you can see the entire map like this, you can then select the points on this map by clicking on them, or you can select all the points together by pressing A on your keyboard. If you want, you can move these points to a different area on the texture image so that a different part of the texture is applied on our object. So press G to grab, and you can move your mouse in any direction to move the selected points on the map, and either click on your mouse once to accept the change or press escape to cancel the change. Let's say we move it to this area, and then click to accept it. Now this new area is mapped to our cube and the texture is displayed as per the new mapping. While moving the UV map, you can also lock it to any one direction. If you press G and then X, it will move only in the horizontal direction when you move your mouse to reposition the map on this. Similarly, if you press G on your keyboard and then Y, it will be locked to the vertical axis, so any movement of your mouse will just move the map vertically on this texture. You can also rotate it by pressing R on your keyboard and moving your mouse either way. Let us rotate it like this. You can even change the size of this map. First press S on your keyboard, then move your mouse to make it bigger or smaller in size. And just like before, you can lock the scaling in any one direction. If you press S and then X, the scaling operation will be locked in the horizontal direction. Once it is done, you can press G to grab, lock it in the X, and move the map to place it anywhere on the texture. The cube will display the area that you have chosen for the UV map. Now, in this particular case, the outer surface of this entire object is represented by one single, continuous area, which is easy to handle. But if we instead use a complex object, it is possible to have multiple disconnected areas, or islands, depending upon the shape of our object, 
and sometimes you may need to modify it manually. We'll look into one such example. Let us work on this object that has a curved shape. We will apply the same wooden texture on this. And we'll discover how to do it best using UV editing. So we'll first create a new material. Let us go to the rendered view, and enable the HDRI lighting. We have to again open the shader editor. So split the screen here. And open the shader editor, on this side. These steps are always same, for any new texture you would probably add. We need an image texture node here, for the texture input. Let us open the same wooden texture again, for this node. We'll then connect its color output, to the BSDF node. But you can see, that this time, the mapping is not good. We have this scene line clearly visible, and on this side, the texture is distorted, and does not look at all correct. Blender has created a default UV mapping, without unwrap, just like the default cube, so we have distortions, and some unpleasant seam lines across our object. We'll create our own UV mapping, and rectify this unwrap issue. So let us open the UV editor. And on this side, switch over to the edit mode. Now, if you select all the vertices of this object, you can see that we get this type of a projection, just like a plain surface, without any consideration for the curved surface, and that is precisely what is causing the distortions, and the wrong mapping for the texture. So we have to unwrap this correctly, in order to get a better UV mapping, for each part of this object. While everything is selected over here, please go to this UV menu, and click on Unwrap. But we get an error message that Blender failed to unwrap, due to lack of a seam for the target object. We received this error because Blender does not know where to make a cut on this round surface and unwrap it to a 2D plane, like it did for the cube object. This time, we do not have any sharp edges or any seam line, so Blender just failed to unwrap it. For the solution part, we can manually add a seam to cut here and unwrap this surface. Or we can use an option called Smart UV Project from this UV menu. If you click here, you'll get an option box like this. We can use these options to tell Blender, how to define the cuts for this surface, in order to map it on the texture. This angle field controls, how many cuts Blender will create to unwrap this. A lower value in this, will result in a lot of cuts in many disjoint sections, so there will be more islands on this map, but it will be very accurate. And if you increase this value, there will be less number of cuts, with some possible distortions. Let's go with the default value, and click on OK. Now, Blender has done the unwrapping, and created this UV map, for our curved object. Here, these two circles, represent the two ends of this object. And this middle section, with a curved surface, is divided into four separate pieces on this map. They together represent, this part of the object. To see the effect clearly, let us go to the object mode, by pressing the tab key. Now you can see the texture looks little better, as there is no distortions here. So the UV mapping has definitely improved. But there is still a line here, very clearly visible. This is the seam, along which Blender has made a cut. There are more such lines, like we have another line here. There are total four lines, as there are four cuts on its UV map. This might look very odd, or abnormal. So we can define our own seam line. We cannot avoid a seam, but we can keep it away from the visible area. For example, we can select the underside of an object, or we can take the backside, to create a seam. It hardly comes in front of the camera, and the seam line remains unnoticeable. So before you go for any manual editing of the UV map, decide on the area where you can make the seam line, that works best for your scene. Let us go back to the edit mode. First, go to the UV menu, and select, clear seam, which removes all existing seam lines. Now we'll add our own seam, but not on the front side. Let us go for this underside of our object. We have to select one line of vertices, or one edge, and we'll convert that to a seam line, in order to unwrap its surface. So, let us select two vertices, on a line, side by side. Then, go to the select menu, and under select loops, select, edge loops. Now, this edge got selected, and we'll mark it as a seam. So go to the UV menu, and select, Mark Seam. It will now get highlighted in red color, which indicates that it is a seam line for the UV unwrap. And in addition to this, we want to also cut out these flat ends, 
so that they are separate from the curved surface on the UV map. So, select any two vertices on the border of this circular part. Then, go to the Select menu and under Select Loops, select Edge Loops. So you get this entire circle selected. Now go to the UV menu and select Mark Seam. Now, we have to do the same thing for the other end as well. Select any two adjacent vertices. Then in the Select menu, select the Edge Loop. And in the UV menu, select Mark Seam. So, the outer surface of this object will now get divided into three parts, the two flat ends, and this curved surface should be one separate part. Now select everything by pressing A. Again go to the UV menu and select Unwrap. This time, it will unwrap and project the curved surface like this, in a single piece, which gives a far better result. The UV editing is done, let us go to the object mode. The texture mapping now looks quite good. And there is no visible seam line anywhere, which is a key step to give your objects a realistic view. The seam line is hidden under the object, you can see it here, but it is unlikely to get visible unless the object starts rotating. So in order to hide the seam, you need to decide how to exactly cut the object. You can make multiple such cuts as you need to flatten the different parts of an object and you can even decide which part of the texture is mapped to which part of the object. Let us look at an example and see how to change this. In the edit mode, right now we can see the UV map for the entire object in the UV editor. Let's say we want to change the texture map for this particular face. So turn on the face selection mode and select this face. You will see that the UV editor is now displaying the UV map just for the selected face. Press A to select all the points here. Now you can resize this UV map. Or you can use the grab tool to move this map to any other part of this texture. Similarly, for the other face, you can highlight its UV map and change it in whatever way you wish. And there is no issues even if you overlap it on another UV map. If you select all the faces, you can get the entire map visible. You can also use the box selection tool to select a group of connecting points and make any changes to it. Right now, we have selected the map corresponding to this curved area of our object. You can easily move the map. Please check on the right side how it shows the changes on the actual object in real time. You can realign the UV map this way. Back to the object mode. So we have covered the basic techniques in UV editing, how to unwrap an object, how to create a seam line as per your choice, and how to align a texture perfectly on the surface of an object. In the next tutorial, we'll discuss how to create multiple UV maps for a single object and how to use them, so please stay tuned. I hope you find this topic useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.